having a some personal talk with the in-person student. Okay, welcome back after the break. Um, uh, we'll finish our last uh, lesson in this hour. Okay, and another area of challenge that we can face in ministry apart from women, money is fame, right? We all want to become famous, well-known, have uh, many followers in Instagram, YouTube, you know, thumbs up, we look for that, you know. Uh, in some some way, uh, you know, become becoming famous um, uh, can creep in. We want to be well-known, uh, appreciated, um, and liked by people, okay? And... Um, what happens when uh, when we look for fame? What happens? This is a good thing to look for fame, to become famous. Good name is important. Is the good name important? Hello, is good name important? Yes or no? Being famous is important? Huh? No, okay. Um, to have a good name, yes, is important, okay. And uh, it's important for us to have a good name. Look at what Scripture says in Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse one. Can somebody read that, please? Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse one. You can pass on the mic to Diksha, and yeah, Proverbs twenty-two, one. Proverbs twenty-two, one. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. Ecclesiastes 7 1. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of that than the day of one's birth. Yes. So is a good name important? Yes. Okay. Uh, and how do we get a good name? By publishing our banners, our photos, our putting our images everywhere in our ministry area and our churches. How do we get a good name? Our character, the life that we live. Okay, and um, so is character. So does good name come like overnight? No, it's built over time. We need to be consistent in our character we need to be consistent in our behavior yes Deepu says good behavior and character is very very important so is it important for us to pursue fame no uh that's good character good that's good name last good name last if you consistently have a good character will you have a good name even after you're dead, will you have a good name? Yes. What about being famous? <laughs> I like when students sit right here up in front of me and does really good actions. Uh, actually, we had um, the, the, the in-person students, they had a Christmas um, a program yesterday. They uh, treated us with a good Christmas program, a skit and dance and everything. And so the person sitting right up in front was acting like Herod. So he's continuing to act even in the class today <laughs> because he did some good acting yesterday. I, we had a good time. They did a wonderful job, just a super job. They put up a skit and all of those things. And thank you, guys. You really did such a great job. And we were really blessed and had a good time. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, it was difficult for all of them to wake up in the morning and uh, come. But I appreciate all of the in-person students coming the other students, second and third years, are not having class, and I think they're still sleeping. <laughs> okay. So our um, focus should be on being more Christ-like, okay? Uh, being Christ-like and uh, to live a life that is honoring and pleasing to God so that, you know, when you get a good name, it reflects the God that we serve, okay? It reflects uh, Christ in and through us, okay? Uh, should we be a... God pleaser or a man pleaser? God pleaser, okay. Uh, what happens when we please men? What happens when we please men? 
you know, I was just reading in my quiet time a devotional book, and it says, you know, when you are uh, you are into pleasing people around you, pleasing men, it uh, it uh, increases anxiety, worry, stress. Uh, you know, you feel depressed. And I thought, how true it is. You know, when we are trying to please people around us, and people are never going to be pleased with how much ever you do, how much ever you be, whatever you give them, and it gets fr you get frustrated. It increases stress, anxiety, worry. It makes you feel more anxious, worry. Uh, you know, depressed. You feel more oppressed in your spirit as well. So it's important for us to be God pleasers, not men pleasers. Okay, we need to look for applause from heaven and not from men. Okay. Um, uh, so when we preach and when we teach and we do things, okay, uh, should we do it to impress people or to impart or to teach? To impart and to teach, not to impress. Okay. What happens if you are a person who is continually trying to impress people? What happens? Uh, Deepu says, you know, people's expectation increases. Yes. What happens when you're a people pleaser? What happens to you as a person? Your whole focus will be to, pe to be people. So what happens when you're focusing on pe pleasing people? You will not be able to do what God wants you to do. You will do what people want you to do, right? Uh, you will preach sermons what people want to hear. You will say things what people want to hear. You will act cool. You will behave cool. You will uh, speak the same language. You will not uh, say, hey, that is wrong. That behavior is wrong. You won't do that. You won't say that because you want to be cool. You want to be nice. You want to uh, please people. You will not call sin as sin. You will not point out mistakes because you want to just, you know, please people. And so what happens is, you know, when people... Um, don't appreciate you when people don't applaud you when don't when people criticize you when people leave your organization or your church what happens to you <laughs> what happens to you huh what happens what happens when people you feel sad thank you Deepu you feel upset yes you go, you get worried you go get into depression yes and you you have a low self image and a very low self value okay you question yourself you're trying to constantly do things to please others and what happens it really frustrates you it really disappoints you feel you feel drained in your energy okay so it's important for us uh, so is it should we just totally forget what people give us feedback and all of those things Shouldn't we listen to people? We should listen, but you know you know where to draw your lines, how much you can uh, do. Okay, so set your heart on not pleasing people but pleasing God. Okay, it doesn't mean that you don't listen to people, you don't care about them, you don't pay attention to their feedback, their suggestions. You take it, you improve so that you can become a better person, but you can't please everybody at all times okay sometimes they mis they misunderstand your motives your the way of you doing things you just have to leave it you can't please everyone okay now you've seen um uh, men and women of god when they have crusades when they have even in their own churches you know even in their if you go to their uh, churches their buildings they'll have posters of them everywhere and they will say they will have uh, like, you know, like, you know, we have Bible passages, you know, scripture passages that we hang up on the walls in our houses. So you will you will have uh, sayings or statements of these people. And then you will see there, you will see a wall hanging and you read it and you think it's from the Bible. And then you think, hey, I have not read this in the Bible. And then it will be the, the pastor's name below. The pastor said this. And so it becomes like a like a quote. So more than scripture verses in the building on the churches, you will see more of these wall hangings that have all of these, what this pastor has made statements or quotes. What do you think about all of these things? Or when they're having seminar conferences, you know, 
huge big pictures or posters of uh, these men and women of God. What do you think about these things? Do you think it's right? Do you think it's right? Yes, no? Have you seen this? Yes? What do you all think? Self-promotion. Yes, it's a self-promotion, yes. There has to be a limit, yes. You can put your images and uh, uh, you know in the graphics, in the, in the poster, like APC has, but we have very small. Pasta keeps it very, very small, very, very minimal. And at times we don't even have the, we just have the name of the speaker, but we don't have the images or huge life-size uh, 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 photos or posters of that person, okay? So, um, why do you think people put up huge images of themselves, what they have said, what they have done, banners with their photos and where they've gone and preached, you know, they're healing somebody. Why do you think they put up all of these things? Sorry? It's one man show, okay? Publicity, okay? Hey, Sunny Moses, where are you? You're not here. Where are you uh, listening and writing from? Huh? From the dining hall? He's going to sleep, huh? Okay. Okay, uh, publicity, yes. They want to make themselves well known, they want to make themselves famous, they want to make themselves recognized. So when you look at, hey, I've never seen this pastor before. I didn't know this man of God. Okay, what is his name? You know, so, you know, you, you they want to become more famous, okay, to be more recognized, okay? But um, when you do all of these promotions, what do you think you should play in the back of your mind? What should you think? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing what I am doing? Anything in life what you do. Why am I saying this? Why am I going here and preaching? Why am I having this convention? Why am I having this program? Why am I, you know, uh, going to preach in this place? You know, you need to ask yourself because that is a kind of a, a, a kind of a check on yourself. You know, are you going to glorify God? Are you going to preach the gospel? Are you have a burden for people who are lost? Or are you just going to do this convention, this conference, this program? So that you can have, uh, you know, you can become famous, well-known, people can come to your church, you can have a big church, okay? So uh, Deepu says it could also be for an information, intention and inner thoughts are important. Yes, sometimes it's, it's for information, but I think the information should be more about what is the conference about, what is the theme, you know, rather than the person. And yes, it's important for the intention and the inner thoughts are more um, important, okay? So, um, you need to ask yourself why you're doing what you are doing. You're doing it to glorify God or to promote yourself as a very anointed man or woman of God, okay? Um, so, don't think all of these promotions that you do on TV, you put your banners, you put your life-size photos, all these are going to really build up your church and ministry. Ultimately, who's going to build it? Yes. You know, it's God who is going to build. It's God who is going to bring the increase. He's going to be, uh, bring the overflow. It's God who does things in and through you. It's not through your own pro, uh, promotions, meetings, conferences. Okay. So let your motives be pure. Okay. Uh, sometimes people think that if they become more popular, it shows that they are fruitful in ministry. Yes or no? They think they equate fruitfulness to popularity or they equate popularity to fruitful fruitfulness okay the more fruitful the more popular you are the more places you're going and preaching the more invitations you're getting people think they're more fruitful okay so popularity does not mean that they're being used mightily in the kingdom of god okay and uh, popularity uh, we should never look for it. It's not an indicator also how we are doing before God. God is not interested in how popular you are. You know, how many TV channels you're coming, you know, how many YouTube likes you have, followers you have, 
you know, how many people you have in your church, what is God more interested about you? What is God looking at you? Come on, what is God look when he, God looks at you, what is he looking for you in your life? He's looking at your character building. Yes, he's looking at your character building. Can, thank you, Get True. Thank you, Deepu. He's looking for your obedience. He's looking if you're doing his will, right? Let his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What else is God looking for? He's not looking for Martha's, he's looking for Mary's, right? Who wanted to sit and listen and, you know, become more Christ-like. Okay, that is what he's looking um, for, okay? Yes, uh, Deepu says, willingness to serve, okay? So how do you um, get away from this whole thing of being popular, famous, looking for power, position? Um, how can you step away from that? What are some of the things that you can do? What are some of the things you can do? Ask yourself this question, why you're doing what you're doing. You know, don't have yourself being publicized uh, whenever you any anything God is doing through your life give glory and honor to God okay uh, another thing is separate yourself from what people think about you okay um, you know we must uh, in as ministers of God we must develop strength uh, you know and not let all the good and the bad things that people say about you affect you okay uh, you know, some people will give you honor, some people will not give you the honor, they will dishonor you. The same people who honor you today, they will dishonor you tomorrow when they get upset or angry with you. Some people will give you a good report, some, some people will give you a bad report, okay? Um, because people think in different ways. But it's important that you are standing before God and doing what is right in His eyes. Okay, it's important to get feedback, it's important to change in some areas, but don't take everything that people say because that will demotivate you. You cannot last in ministry if you listen to every and anything that people say, it can discourage you. Okay, so it's important to take the positive, leave the other things, you know, um, guard your heart, and also important to stand before God and say, God, you know. Uh, was I right in doing this? Was I wrong in doing this? Correct me, God. Teach me. Show me. It's important how we truly stand um, before um, God. Okay. So when people applaud you, they give you all the glory and honor, say good job, pat you on the back. You know, don't get it. Let it go on your head. Okay. Why? Because pride can slip in. What was um, Satan's greatest downfall? Pride. He thought he can be like God. Okay. And uh, even when people dishonor you, speak evil against you, you know, say rude things, nasty things, that things that really hurt, you know, what did, what did, what should you do? You should need to guard your heart. Okay, don't get wounded and hurt, because when you get wounded and hurt, you can get back at those people. You can hurt them. It can become like a cycle. Okay, and you can't minister to God if you are in both areas, both when you are having pride and also when you are wounded and hurt. Remember, don't serve God, don't preach, don't teach when you are wounded and hurt. Don't preach and teach even when you are filled with pride. It's okay to let go for some days. Settle yourself with God, your emotions, your heart attitudes. Settle it with God, focus on God, come back and then God can use you mightily for His ministry okay and then um who you are before god is more important than who you are before man okay it's it's better to you know uh, have god tell you when you enter heaven well done good and faithful servant than you know he telling you who are you i don't know you you know and you say god i went to the prison i went here i did ministry here i did ministry there say sorry i don't know who you are why does he say that? Because you've gone around doing what you wanted to do that makes you famous, well known, but you have not done what is the will and the heart and the purpose and the plan for God for your 
life okay so always um, remain focused to what god has called you what is his will his plan for your life and who you are before god it's very very important because it's important to hear from god well done good and faithful servant okay you can get applause from men women they can appreciate you you can become famous but that's no point that's not indicator that god is going to tell you the same um, thing okay and also important that when people idolize you they think you are god you know they think all the uh, you're praying for them you're giving them word of wisdom knowledge prophecy or uh, preaching well you're annoying such a powerful preacher and all of those things don't let it go into your head just in, remember that you are a human being and it's the anointing of god that is flowing through you if it's not the anointing of god you cannot be in that place it's god's gift his grace his anointing over your life and that we are just earthen vessels and nothing more okay and um, all that we use god's word his spirit his anointing all should be to point to whom point to who do you point to the word that you preach the anointing that you flow in the whole power of the holy spirit who should it point to god okay not point to your uh, self okay and even when yes you give all the glory and honor to the lord god all mighty yes thank you deepu okay uh, regardless of how big and famous you become remember that it's all about god it's god working in and through you so you need to keep your feet on level ground don't think that you are higher than people you know sometimes we come to a place where we are flowing in the anointing we're flowing in the gifts we are powerful we are ministering to people and we think we are above people we think we become god to people so when people tell us something we get angry and people correct us we become angry when people show us our weaknesses we get angry okay that is a wrong place to be we need to re re uh, realize that regardless of our power or influence we must be on level ground that means we need to keep our feet on the ground we need to be stable we need to know who we are where we are from it's only because of god's grace his anointing in our life so always stay simple approachable teachable humble when people teach you receive correction don't come to a place where you're way high up you're thinking i'm perfect nobody can tell me and you know these people when they become they come to that place they don't want to listen to others and when people point out their mistake they treat them very very badly they push them away they throw them out of ministry throw them out of the leadership positions uh, don't treat them well and it's very very uh, sad so we need to be humble submit ourselves to one another the word of god says submit yourself to one and other and accept one another okay um just a few more things okay uh, the more you're given the more you're going to be accountable to okay so remember that even as god takes you to higher places of glory he's moving you in the gifts the grace and the anointing that means he's given you greater levels that you have gone to there's greater accountability yes or no yes you're more accountable at that time so you need to be more on guard more vigilant more humble more sincere okay and uh, it's important that uh, you do things with diligence and commitment and be faithful generally when people reach a certain position or a level you know they say hey i've done so many years of ministry i've accomplished this i've accomplished that i've done this i've done that they become lazy they become slack uh they don't give attention to details as they did when they started off in ministry okay so even as we grow and increase we need to come to a place where we know that we are more accountable to god okay if we are not in a place of accountability what happens you know we've reached zenith we need reach a high place high place high position we're very famous very powerful but we come to a place where we don't feel accountable both to god and man what happens you miss the mark and that is sin yes what happens when you come to that place we can fall any time yes thank you daniel oliver you can fall at any time that can become your downfall right imagine when it's a downfall 
It's not only you who are put to shame, but it's your sheep, the people who are along with you, journeying along with you, their hearts are broken and they can go away from God. Okay, so wherever we are, whichever level we are, need to be humble, need to know that whatever God has entrusted, we need to multiply that more and more because we are more accountable to God. Okay, and the last thing is, um, uh, you know, oh, sorry, you know, so the higher God takes us, you know, we need to be more humble, okay? The more God exalts us, we need to come to a level where we are more humble, more teachable, both before God and um, man, okay? So don't desire fame, appreciation, and applause. You know, let it die. Don't give in to the flesh, okay? Even if you don't get appreciation, even if you don't get love, even if you don't, people don't say, ah, who and stand and applause you and pat you, don't let it disappoint you, okay? Uh, remember that glory, honor, wealth, riches come from God. The Bible says glory, honor, wealth, riches come from God. Okay, he's the one who brings increase. He's the one who brings exaltation. He's the one who brings recognition in your life. You just be faithful to what God has entrusted to you. You stay obedient. You do the will of God. You continue to walk in Christ likeness and all of these will just follow uh, you, okay? So the more you grow higher in level that God is taking you, the more you need to hide yourself in God, okay? Because those are times when we are more vulnerable to Satan and he can bring our downfall. Because Satan knows as leaders when he brings our downfall, the whole church, the whole sheep can fall apart. Okay, and the last thing is we need to be aware of uh, you know God comp be uh, beware of God complex. You know we come to a place sometimes where we think we are God. You know we are God over people, so we tell them what they should do, what they shouldn't be doing. Nobody can tell us. Nobody can correct us. You know. Um, um, even if we uh, go against God's word, even if we violate God's word, we see ourselves above God's word, okay? And uh, we think that we are, uh, you know, uh, in a place where we are God ourselves. And that is wrong, okay? Look at what Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 says, submit to one another in fear of God, okay? So when we are in a place of total yielding, submission, and surrender, you know, you know that you're keeping yourself free from God complex, walk in meekness and humility, and this way, you know, you can lead others to Christ, and your life can speak for itself, and you can fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life, okay? And you can walk in a God-honoring way, and that is what is going to lead people to Christ. And that is what is going to bring more anointing, more power that can help you. So these are very, very, very uh, subtle things which we can overlook, but we need to keep ourselves mindful of these things. Always be teachable. You know, always be open before God for him to correct us. Always be submissive, yielding and obedient to God and to man. Okay. Any questions on both these chapters? Any questions? Yes. Uh, can we think that the population and ministry is a blessing? Uh, can we think that? The population is a blessing. Population in uh, ministry is a blessing? Yes, why not? You mean in your church, if your church grows, you're saying that, is it a blessing? Yeah. Yes. It's a blessing. Why is it a blessing? Because it's God who has brought in the sheep, right? And why is he bought it? Because he's looked at you as a man who is accountable, who's humble, who's doing his will, and he's bringing people to be fed by you. What he and you're listening to him, and you're feeding your sheep, and you know. But don't let that uh, that blessing become a pride, and God can take it away. Okay, Lucy says, when we receive praises, how do we respond to people? When we receive praises, um, uh, just say thank you, you know, and just give glory and honor and praise to God. You can just tell them it's God who's done this through me. 
and also think for yourself, hey, I know how weak I was. I know how much in fear and trembling I came and preached this word or prayed or, you know, the difficulties I'm going through, the challenges, but thank you, God, for using me. Uh, I know who where I was, where I was, where you brought me, God. Thank you for using me. I think that is um, something that we do in our minds, but at the same time, we can thank them, give the glory and honor and praise to God, and also be mindful of where you are and where God has brought you, and thank him for that. Yes. It's related to this uh, fame, like a pastor is there, well-known, very famous, like big pastor, ministry is very big. So, and uh, we are attending a church, like our pastor. So he is uh, pointing out some mistakes what this pastor is doing, which is very famous. So it is right or wrong? Because in front of us, like Jesus only tell we should not judge others what they are doing. So what we should do? What do you think? We learned it, right? We just looked at it last. We studied it last uh, week. When we studied people, uh, you know, how we relate to people, uh, we looked at it, preaching. Uh, we learned what we should do, what we shouldn't do, anointing. What do you think you should do? Judging, uh, to judge people, it is not right. You what? should not judge that person? Yeah. It's okay. Like whatever their mistakes and all, Lord will, Lord will take care of them. It's like if they are doing some mistakes and all, they will so fall. They will see fall down in their ministry. Nothing else. Yes. But we should not judge them. And remember, why do you look at the plank uh, speck dust in your brother's eye when you have plank in your own eye, right? So don't use the pulpit time for give the don't give the pulpit time to the devil, right? Don't use the pulpit time, your message time to put down other men and women of God. Because if they are a big church, they're having a big church is because of God's anointing and blessing. Don't be jealous of them. You be faithful. You preach and teach the word. Don't put down other people. Don't judge them. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, uh, online students, any questions? Sister, many times when we pray and somebody is healed, uh, we try to give credit to ourselves instead of God. We say, I prayed and that person got healed. That is wrong. You know, I used to do that before, but not now anymore. Yes, thank you for sharing, Mr. Gertrude. I think that's uh, very humbling enough to, for you to share it, actually. I think we all go through that. Yeah. And we also get upset when the person is giving a testimony. And saying, you know, uh, I had this problem and uh, the sister prayed for me and God healed me. And the sister or the brother is very angry and said, why didn't they say my name? No, <laughs> I prayed for them. See, yeah. so I think um, when the thoughts will come to our mind, it's not that we are perfect. But what, come, what should you do when the thought comes to your mind? Hey, it's not me was God, the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit that worked in and through me. Okay. Daniel says, can we look for faithful workers or we need to train them? Um, we can train people, Daniel, with skills, but we can't train them to be committed and faithful and honesty, integrity, honesty, integrity, faithfulness, commitment, uh, all I think comes uh, is within us and I think it comes out of a relationship with God you know we can't teach people to be honest I realize that you know even with the assessments when I'm looking at the assessments it's very sad you know uh, where we are learning about uh, we're learning so much about uh, you know being honest and how to be ministers of God you know how to do with honesty and integrity uh, we learned this whole four months, and when I'm looking at some of the assessments, I'm seeing people having, you know, multiple, uh, 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 connecting through multiple email IDs and doing the test in multiple email IDs and sending those. And one test, they get less. The other test, they get more because they know all the answers. And some of them are discussing and writing. Some of them are copying from each other. And I was very heartbroken, actually, when I when I looked at the assessment. So, you know, uh, 
and I realized that you know you you can't teach people honesty and integrity and faithfulness. It has to come within it. Even after we had, even after I've thought four months about honesty, integrity, and you know being faithful in little things, honest in small things. I'm thinking when people are not honest in the small thing of assessments, when we go into ministry, when we face with bigger challenges, how are they going to? face it, God, when they're not able to face a small assessment and being honest, a small assessment. And that was that was something that I was really upset. Uh, I said, God, you know, speak to them, change them. Because if they're not honest in a small thing, like an assessment for a 25 marks, you know, then when it comes to bigger challenges, how can we be honest? When we know it's an assessment, the test, we should not be discussing with others, we should not copy others, not doing these, uh, you know, things. Uh, so, you know, faithfulness and all of these things, we can't really teach people. It just comes out of your relationship uh, with God, you know. And I think he's the one who really helps us to in those areas. Only when we are connected to God, all of these things flow out. Honesty, integrity, faithfulness and the rest, yes. Yeah. You can teach men and women skills, but not this. Yes, any questions? Ma'am, once you mentioned don't serve God when you are hurt. Hmm. So how it's connected? Uh, don't serve God when you're hurt means there's a lot of bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, anger. Uh, and when you are ministering out of that mindset, out of those emotions, uh, you know, uh, the anointing of God can you just, so this mic is jarring. Can you just reduce the volume, please? You know? Uh, so at those times, uh, you know, uh, you, you just don't feel, you know, the, the move of God is not, the anointing of God is not there. You're, you're teaching and preaching out of brokenness and pain and... Uh, I'm not, I'm not saying that when you're broken or pain or, you know, you're feeling sad about something, don't use that as an excuse. No, God can still use you, but you need to, you know, settle it with God and then come and preach and teach. So don't say that or oh, make all of these as an excuse. But what I'm saying is, if you've not done it, you've not settled it with God, don't go and preach and teach. Uh, bring the healing for yourself so that the healing can flow out through you. All these can be a hindrance. It's not the uh, right spirit that you're going with, right? So, yeah. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay, there's no questions and we'll uh, end class. Thank you all uh, for journeying through these uh, three uh, publications. Uh, thank you so much uh, for all of you who faithfully joined class um attended class uh, every uh, fridays thank you very much and uh, have a blessed uh, christmas season all of you maybe a refreshing time um, a renewing time uh, in your walk in your journey with god just to know that you know he who gave his only son how will he not along with him graciously give you all things so that can be um, uh, something that you can remind yourself. Some of you are going through, uh, you know, lack. Some of you are going through challenges, difficulties. Um, know that, you know, uh, God who gave his only son, how will he not along with him graciously give you all things, graciously give you good health, strength, uh, you know, breakthroughs for your life. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel, especially for the assessment, the good learning experience. Thank you for the positivity, Daniel. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Have a blessed Christmas season uh, and a good break, and I will see you. Thank you, Lucy, as well. Thank you, Andrew, Angeline, Sanjay. Uh, thank you, appreciate that. Thank you, Deepu, Esther, Sonia. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, God bless all of you and see you next semester and please uh, put into practice everything that we have uh, learned. Okay, let it not just be in these three publications. 
but uh, put that into uh, practice. You have any questions uh, regarding the assessments? You didn't get marks. Um, you know, I've I've been um, uh, sending out your marks, so please check. You know, and if uh, you posted your assessment and you have not received the mark, please write to me on the stream page. Okay, don't send an email to me. Uh, so write it on the Google Classroom stream page. I can I'll keep checking that, uh, and then I will follow up with uh, you. Okay, thank you all. Uh, the first, yeah, I have not sent out the first assessment, Lucy. I have not sent out the first assessment. I just sent I think the third and the second. I will do the first and the fourth. Thank you. God bless you all. Appreciate all your uh, your love and your kind words. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Selina. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. Have a good time with your family. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you, Advanced, Lucy. Advance Merry Christmas to you and your family. <laughs> Wish you the same. God bless you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you.